Hello, guys and girls. Yeah, it is I, Aaron Lee, here, or Aaron Halo 18. And I'm doing a video about Halo 5 Guardians uh, Discussion Series Episode 5. And I'm going to read an article from uh, HaloWaypoint.com called The Light is Green. It's a Halo Community Update community Halo official website. And this article is by, this blog is by, uh, uh B is for Bravo, 9 slash 4, 2015. Uh, PAX Prime has come and gone. Many of you ascended on Seattle, and we prepared a preview of Halo 5 Guardians for your awaiting and capable hands. Uh, Warzone uh, designers and immaculate uh, disguises discusses disguises. Watch your first Warzone matches. Go real time feedback and kept an eye on what was easily understood and what may require adjustments. UI and player instruction spawns routes sight lines and more so we re reunited with old friends uh, folks from uh, Griffball Hub R slash Halo HCS Pro uh, players uh, cosplayers speedrunners uh, toy collectors and many more and also met New ones, including including one gentleman who played uh, Warzone 17 times over the course of four days, uh, waiting in line for for over an hour each time. Uh, Sean, a special care package is on the way. No, nope, I almost wrote car package in the last sentence. This may have likely cost. Us considerably, considerably more money, and also my job. Jeff, Jeff Fresh joins members of the Forum Fifth at Pax Prime, including Mini Chief and the uh, Mini Palmer. On the evening of the final night of Pax Prime, following a few days of bite-sized sneak peeks. We released the opening cinematic for Halo 5 Carnage. You ask, uh, you buy. Then I uploaded this video on my so the cinematic trailer on my uh, YouTube channel uh, already. And I'm doing my uh, video a little late uh, today. That's it for, for me for now. If you're like me, so you've watched uh, Fireteam Arias so, uh, drop onto the surface of Gamma Cheka uh, many, many times. I don't think I'll tire of watching uh, Spartans uh, skydive into battle. Hearing the first comm checks, watching Veil single-handedly uh, clear out a dropship or hearing locks you ask you buy I trust you've already clicked on the link above if you haven't yet uh, checked out checked uh, out the opening uh, to the Halo 5 campaign uh, do so now to get a behind the scenes look at the creation of the piece I grabbed some time from three 43. Cinematic director Brian Goodrich and senior an animator uh, Greg Towner, who generously provided some production commentary. Read on for details. Production commentary AO5 opening cinematic. They have a picture of Brian and Craig Towner down below. 
Grave Chowder and Brian Goodrich. Snug out concept art from Halo 5 uh, Guardian, the cinematic trailer. And Brian says, Hi, I'm Brian Goodrich, the director for the Halo 5 opening cinematic. Greg said, and I'm Greg Towner, senior amateur on Halo 5. I worked on the previous motion capture cleanup and animation for the entire entirety of the opening cinematic sequence. Brian said, uh, the opening cinematic sequence really was an incredible amount of fun uh, to create. It's a piece that stretches stretches from his inanimate and subtitle character uh, moments uh, all the way to this hugely insane over-the-top action. It really ended up being fantastic. It's a collaboration that literally spanned continents in order to bring it to life. Greg said, things started with an early draft of the script uh, which featured the introduction to Fireteam or, 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 or Cyrus in the back of the Pelican using very simplified cube uh, versions of the characters. I roughly blocked in the sequence centering the characters around the floating disc. Uh, Brian said, I think there was the, this initial idea was that the transmission from Lasky would be on the wall of the Pelican. But with four characters in the confined space, it just didn't feel uh, right. Uh, Craig, Yeah, it was overcrowded. So by using the disc, we were able to give the Spartans some space. Can we show that there, Ryan? We'll get you done already. Uh, can you make dinner? Yeah. I was going to ask my dad. We were able to give the Spartans some space. And let them, and let them each have an inner introductory moment. While rough, the cube guys provided enough information to do a camera pass, which then became our working edit. Even in that form, we had something really cool that was starting to work. There's show a concept picture of a 3D image of a guy holding a shotgun from Halo. It says below. Smart Edward Block. Greg said things got a little more complicated for the rest of the se of sequence. One, Osiris jumps out of the pelican. All of the animation is hand keyed, utilizing the same cube Spartans. Tanique, I blocked a very rough pass so we could get a feel of the size and scope of the action. Before 343, I had worked on the Transformers uh, movies, so I'm accustomed to doing big action set pieces. Brian said, ha, yes, the skydive and downhill fight previous was completely fun. Greg had this great kept music and SFX uh, track and you could really imagine the spectacle of of it all. The spectacle uh, of it all. From there, we worked to push and shape the previous to really uh, lock down the blueprint for the piece. A skydive sequence. Craig said, and once that, blue, that blueprint uh, solidified, the timing changed very little. For a very, for a vast majority of the sequence, 
I animated uh, over top of the cubes. The whole move, the whole thing moves at such a high rate of speed that it was important uh, to not go off track. I used lots of reference from the stunt team we shot in LA and otherwise utilized classic animation techniques. Brian said we brought in a great stunt team led by uh, Tom Williams to get help all the physical action reference spot on. These guys and girls were awesome and fearless. Stunt work for Locke's takedown. Greg said, once the animation was finished, I worked with Craig, with Eric Black, to bake the animation out and package it up for delivery to Axis. Brian said, we brought Axis into the process early on and centered in on constructing this sort of joint production pipeline. It actually represented a real big breakthrough in terms of production process for a piece of this size and quality. Rick said we essentially completed all the character animation and camera work at 343 and then handed off to Axis for significant uh, finishing work. Brian said Axis did an amazing job with lock uh, Lock, uh, look dev, geo layout, FX simulations, uh, lighting, compositing, and so on. Craig said, we should point out that Axis is in Glasgow, Scotland, and 343 is in Seattle. Uh, Brian, uh, true. Our cinematics producer, Damon Kahn, uh, worked his tail off coordinating, coordinating uh, the efforts between our two studios. Uh, Greg said, did an absolute great job wrangling all the feedback uh, loops and dealing with all the shared uh, assets. Uh, Brian said, those incredible Orion's team faces that you see in the piece were actually created in-house at 343 by our character team and then integrated into Axis, uh, Axis's uh, look dev and render pipeline. Craig said, both team teams did an incredible job on the faces. And Profile did a great job on the all facial uh, capture solves as well. I did a few passes tweaking the face animation on top of the capture keyboard to data for their initial solve deliveries and uh, deliveries were outstanding. And they drew a picture down below of the motion sensor uh, thing for this uh, video. They use real people uh, for the games nowadays. Uh, Brian, uh, Brian said, as Greg mentioned earlier, the whole skydive and mountain, f mountain fight is key uh, frame animation. But we also spent a good amount of time and performance capture. We shot and captured all the actor performances at Profile Studios in LA. Greg said Profile built a very crude mock-up of the interior of the Pelican. The actors had marks uh, to hit based off of the previous layout, but also were allowed quite a bit of uh, wiggle room uh, to make the performance their own. Uh, Craig 
Ryan said we actually shot uh, the whole piece with nearly everyone present in the capture volume at the same time even Lasky and Palmer they appear on a video uh, com but we captured them as if they were right there with everyone so we could get all the timing uh, bits correct Greg said and in the end most of the Pelican sequence is a single take with some augmentation to allow for Nathan Dillon's and perfor performance to be incorporated later. Brian said yes, uh, due to scheduling, Nathan was una unable to be part as part of the initial group shot, so we brought him in later with as much of the other group as we could get. I think I even had to play Tanka for part uh, of it to get the timing interaction correct. Craig said, ha. Overall, I think my favorite aspect of the whole sequence is how we pulled off the action portion in a single camera move. Brian said, yeah, that was definitely no small talk. It ended up working great, though. The camera has enough weight and noise to feel legitimate and fantastic at the same time. Greg nailed the right balance there. The camera really helps uh, support the excitement and momentum of the piece and most importantly carries the player directly into the game. Uh, Craig said the response has been fantastic. And as people start to dive into the, into it further, I'm surely those I'm sure I'm sure they'll spot little details we added. Uh, looking at you, uh, Buck, and one poor little grunt. Brian said I would like to specifically mention and thank WB and the 343 audio team for all their incredible sound work. And Kazuma Janacha for an incredible musical score. It's Brian Reed and for a great uh, written uh, blueprint. Stuart Akin and Debbie Ross and the whole team at Axis. Our producer, Damon Kahn, and our animation director, Steve uh, Dick. Josh and Tim for their support. And the entire 343. Cinematics team. You guys are the best in the industry, and I'm grateful to work with you every day. Ryan Goodrich, Cinematic Director, A05, 343 Industries, Crick Towner, Senior Amateur, A05, 343 Industries. Back into the action, building the Warzone Response Team and System. Being a brand new epic scale game, game mode, the development of Warzone has required the design of systems that are brand new, brand new to the to Halo multiplayer, and crafted to create the best epic scale multiplayer player experience to date. Last month, we talked about the design of the Warzone uh, power core with look at early development of prototypes and how the final base design came to be this week to ensure that you're ready to uh, hit the ground running or digging into warzone spawning with details straight from the multiplayer team Kevin Franklin multiplayer design director if you're a seasoned Halo veteran there's no question you know how spawning works. Standard Halo works using a system of points and influencers. Spawn points are our fixed positions players can spawn at. Are placed by designers or by 
set to are placed by designers or by community members using Forge. Uh, three are designed by initial where you spawn at the beginning of the match or standard where you spawn during the match. Uh, four can be team or oriented. Oriented. Spawn influencers. One are projectiles, players, player viewpoints, or toggleable regions that affect how likely you are to spawn at a point. For years, this has been a simple and elegant system that worked has worked very well in Halo. What uh, points are carefully placed to provide an effective uh, spawn that gives you cover or sets you on a path around a level towards a power weapon. Influencers keep you out of harm's way of grenades and rockets or spawn you away from enemies and near your teammates. Halo 5 spawning an arena that uh, we worked very closely with Pro Team to make sure that we fix spotting exploits and sneaky advantages that could ruin your day. If you find more post launch, let us know and we'll get on to fixing them. Our goal with Arena was to provide a fine tuned traditional Halo spotting system. A system that suits the expectations of esports and our competitive community. To be clear, our goals are not to completely remove map control or spot control from our competitive players, but to provide an experience that requires a balanced skill set to master without a single strategy to dominate the enemy. Warzone, however, has created an all new set of spawning challenges. We want to ensure we spawn players in the action, but provide spawns safe enough for players to take a breather in what can often be a chaotic experience, especially late game. Th throughout development, the Warzone team has been very passionate about evolving the spawn system. Our design goals were simple. Let players not worry about spawning if they don't want to. Want to. But provide control if they, they'd like to spawn close or far from the action or at slash near a specific team uh, base. This article will provide fantastic perspectives from design, engineering, and test on how we got there. It was a massive team effort to deliver our spawning system and I'm very pleased with all with the res results. The magic. Spawning in Halo is a magical dance of code and content that all all takes place in a fraction of a second. We have an incredible group of engineers, designers, and testers on the team, but that the team that put uh, countless hours into making sure you have a great spot. If you have a bad one, even one out of a 100, please let us know. Let us know. I can promise that we care about them and will work to improve the system. I'll, I'll let our incredible team take it away from here and provide their perspectives and detail. Players cycle through captured bases to select their spot uh, location while waiting to respond in Warzone. Warzone. Uh, Lawrence Matid, uh, SR multiplayer designer. Crafting the ideal spot location is an art for mox proximity uh, to object objectives priority and facing direction all influence players 
to behavior and have a significant impact on the flow of a war zone match. The war zone spawning engine has two big considerations. Spawning the player as close to their selected spawn location as possible while also ensuring that they do not spawn in danger or near enemies. Uh, each war zone spawn point is manually placed. To make sure we have safe locations for players to spawn up to spawn on capturable uh, war zone bases. We place spawn points in three groups we call uh, rings. The first ring is made up of spawn spawns placed it inside the base at base. These are the highest priority spawns that are most commonly selected by the engine when the player selects the base as a spawn location. If there is combat inside the base, however, the engine will ignore uh, spawns in the first ring and instead evaluate spawns in the second spawn ring. The second ring is compromised of spawns placed just outside the base. Our third ring is the failsafe ring and contains spawn points significantly further away from the base. Our spawn engine will only spawn players in the third ring if combat around the base is so chaotic that all spawn points in the, in the other two rings are suppressed. A placed ring uh, two spawn point outside of March on Stormbreak's East Armory base. In addition to spawning on placed spawn points, uh, players can spawn out on out of combat teammates anywhere in a capturable basis spawn zone. William Archbell, SR Software Engineering. Uh, lead. As Warzone features maps four to five times the size of previous Halo maps, maps, we quickly realized our traditional fixed point spawn uh, system uh, wouldn't cut it. To solve that problem, we built a system that generates new dynamic spawn locations at the exact moment a player spots using a hybrid of fixed locations and dynamic spawn point points offers an improved selection of locations in any circumstance. Combining or battle tested area spawning system and hybrid spawn points give us the brand new bro spawning you see uniquely when you play Warzone. Uh, bro spawns, spawn players behind teammates within a basis spawn uh, zone. Bro spawning works initially on the micro level. The first stage is to find groups of players using uh, clustering analysis to understand who is working together as a team each set a player is then evaluated to determine if it's suitable for to, to to for a player to join by looking at a number of factors confidence level in group directional heading number of players in the cluster combat status and enemy player presence Once compatible uh, clusters have been identified, it becomes possible to start generating spawn locations dynamically around the group. Uh, bro spawning can spawn players uh, behind teammates on their way towards a war zone uh, boss objective. 
the initial prototype for generating spot locations use technology we built to determine order edge drop locations in Halo 4. This worked out surprisingly well. What was heavily tailored to identify good locations to pick up order edge for Trump. To solve that, we built a new school a fish system for spawn point generation. The premise being that a player would spawn at the back of the group and immediately have other players to follow. This, gener this guarantees that within seconds of spawning a player understands where they should be moving to base player mov movement. Uh, I know. Shane Artinio, Warzone test team lead. Warzone spotting uh, is one of the most complex yet it's beautiful systems we've built for Halo 5. In a game mode where there are a Covenant, Forerunner, Marines, and Spartans fighting on foot plus Warthogs and Banshees uh, zooming across the map, still being able to find a way to spawn players safely is truly an accomplishment. Uh, in Halo 4, we had limits as to how we could spawn players. For example, we were not able to have unique spawning systems for different game uh, variants. This affected big team uh, battle tremendously. We had to use the same size influencers across all maps. If we made an influencer too big to support a BTB map like Vortex, it could potentially create bad spotting experiences on a smaller 4v4 map like Haven. This resulted in having enemies spot within view for view by very far away. With Halo 5, we were able to create our own specific spawn system for Warzone. In regards to spawning, Warzone has no limits. My favorite part about the Warzone spawning system is the fact that we could we can be sprinting into battle and have allies partners spawning right behind you, having your back as you take on enemy Spartans or bosses, take the team to win games. Then the Warzone spawning system em embraces that. We hope you've enjoyed this week sneak peek into Warzone spawning. And we look forward to your feedback in just a few short months. It's not a pretty long uh, article, guys and girls. I don't think I'll be able to read it all. There's a lot of reading here. It's just the play of the week uh, for this guy. And, uh... My, pe my best friend Zach is here. And my mom is here, too. And, uh... I'm having a good day, and uh, I hope you enjoyed my video. Please rate. I, I hope you enjoyed my. I hope you liked my video and enjoyed it for your viewing pleasure, guys and girls. And uh, please rate, comment, like, favorite, subscribe, view, thoughts, and opinions. And I. And uh, please drink some hot chocolate. And I'll see you all later. Bye.